Okay, so we're going to be looking at setting up a decent render for a simple file. So the file I'm working with is this uh, textured perfume bottle. You can find the link in the description to this video. Uh, so the texturing has been done already um, and that was covered in a previous um, video. So we're going to get a nice decent render out of this. So the first thing I want to do is actually improve the backdrop or background a little bit. Um, so I'm going to select this surface object and just zoom out a little bit and we will go to modify add an edit poly modifier go to edge mode and I'll just double click on the back edges here so double click and then hold down control and double click there so we've got those two edges selected and then I'm going to extrude those up and I'll go quite high so that it doesn't really matter the angle of the camera there'll always be something there okay then I'll go back here select that edge and that edge and I'll go to chamfer and just increase the chamfer amount and the number of segments okay and then I'm going to apply an open subdiv modifier so it's nice and smooth okay so um, what I want to do is also put a texture on this so that um, I've got something nice in the background so I'm going to add a UVW map so that I can control the texture press M for the material editor and make a new physical material Let's just move it down here. I'll call it backdrop. I will apply it or assign it. And then um, I'm going to, for the base color, I'm going to add a simple gradient. Okay, now in my UVW map, I need to choose the, my, the right mapping coordinates. So I'm going to leave it on planar but I'm going to change to the X um, axis and then I'm going to open up the UVW map uh, modifier choose the gizmo and just move that map down so that I get a nice gradient going on here um, I can change the colors of that gradient by clicking on this M material map and change the color so I'm going to do that I'm going to make this more of a really dark purple. Okay. And I'm actually pretty happy with that. I think that'll look okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's the material on the backdrop. Now I need to set up some lighting. So I'm going to. Um, go to my left view here and I'm going to add a light I'm going to choose Arnold lights and click over here make sure it's a quad light and let's just set it up in the top view so um, I want the light to be over here and I want it to be rotated so that it's pointing in this direction and then I'm going to uh, shift drag a copy over here and rotate it like that so I've got a light shining there light shining there then I need to just get a camera view so I can play around with the lighting and get the right sort of look that I want. So in my top view camera and I'm going to choose target camera and I want the camera to be looking like that. Okay, I'm going to take the camera target 
and I'm going to make sure that that is kind of plumb center on the perfume bottle. So wherever the camera is, it'll always be looking at the perfume bottle. Okay, let's move that up a tiny bit. All right, and then um, I'm going to change my perspective view to camera one. And now we can select the camera. And let's move that up. And in a bit. Okay, that's quite a nice angle there. Alright, so now in order for me to play around with the lighting, I need to get an approximation of what the render is going to look like. So I'm going to um, activate the camera um, view and I'm going to go to rendering, render setup. I'm going to choose active shade mode and then make sure the render is, is Arnold. So Active Shade allows you to make changes to lighting and materials and see the changes happening in real time. So it's kind of a fairly close approximation of what you'll get in a final render. I'm going to press Render. And there's our view. Okay, I'm not unhappy with that. Um, I would say that maybe the camera just needs to come out a little bit there. That's better. All right, um, so let's play around with these lights. So I'll take the first Arnold light, go to Modify. Um, I'm going to leave it as a quad light because quad lights give this nice sort of diffuse light effect. And I'm going to change the um, intensity. Well, first of all, the color of the light. I'm going to make it a slightly yellow white very slightly yellow white and I'll leave the intensity at 1 and then I'll go to Arnold Light 2 I'll make the color slightly blue white and I'm going to bring the intensity down to half so 0 0.5 okay and let's also just take the exposure down a little bit maybe 4 Okay, and then for the Arnold Light 1, let's take the exposure down to 4 as well. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, maybe 5. Okay. Alright, so you can play around, you know, setting up lighting and renders can be a very time consuming process of testing and and tweaking and testing and tweaking but this is just some of the things that you can do um, in your actual render setup now that I'm ready to do an actual render I'm going to set from actual from active shade to production render mode make sure it's on Arnold um, these settings here are what will determine the quality of the render versus the time it takes to render so the lower these values the faster the render the poorer the quality and you've just got to find that sweet spot between the quality that you want and the time you can afford to dedicate to rendering. Some renders can take horrendously long to render. It all depends on how much lighting you've got, how much ray tracing and all of that stuff. So it's going to be way too much to go through all of this in this video, but you can play around with these. I'm going to leave them at default for this particular case. That's going to work fine for me. I'm going to go to the common tab and I'm going to set the size, output size, to 1920 by 1080. If this was an animation with a camera, I would set a range of frames to render. Then I'm going to go down to my render output, and I'm going to go to Files, and I'm going to set my render to my desktop, and I'm just going to call it Perfume Bottle um, product shot and I'll put it at a JPG best quality and OK so now <clears throat> I'm ready to start rendering I'll close the active shade render and then I'm going to press render and I will come back when the render is completed
Okay, so the render is finished, and because I set up the output file, it's already saved to JPG. Now this one took about 20 minutes on my machine, which is pretty slow, and um, that's because render times can be affected by many variables, not just your Max setup. So obviously within Max, the number of lights, the kind of textures, the amount of refraction, um, all affects your render time, but in my case, I am running Max on a MacBook Air, uh, one of the M2 MacBook Airs, so I'm running it through a virtual machine, which means it splits my resources between Mac OS and Windows. So that obviously means you pay a price in terms of performance, although I have to say I'm pretty happy with the performance of Macs on the setup, but for render times, you're probably doubling your render times. Um, and not only that, I'm also recording a video, and I'm also running a 27-inch external monitor off my MacBook Air. So there's a lot going on here. So I'm not unhappy with a 20 minute render time. If you've got a dedicated Windows machine with good specs, you're probably going to half or quarter that render time. Okay, and then just one other thing, when you are saving out um, an image from here, just bear in mind that rendered images from 3D applications are usually never just used as is. There's always a post-production process. In other words, opening it in an application like uh, Photoshop or After Effects and applying some color correction, some compositing and a whole lot of other stuff. So if you are going to do some compositing, let's say into a video uh, comp or something like that, you might want to save out in a different format such as EXR, open EXR image, or even an HDR um, option. Where's HDR there? Um, so those are things you can look up as to how you can use as, that in compositing. I've just saved out to JPG, and I can open that in Photoshop and do some post-production, which I will be covering in another video. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and see you next time.